Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Michelle, and today I'm going to be telling you guys which one is better, Crayola or Prismacolor pencils. Before we get into this video, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and the like button, and let's get into this video and talk about which colored pencil brand is going to be better for you. Okay guys, so here we are, and now to talk about which one is better. Um, so we all know about Crayola, you know, we've all used them before, and Crayola is a very cheap uh, colored pencil selling, crayon selling brand, and um, it's most well known for their crayons actually, but we're talking about their colored pencils today. Um, I'm pretty sure for their 24 colored pencil pack, you can get it for $2.87 online at walmart.com and um, Prismacolor's a pack of 24 um, that you can get on Amazon for $28 and a few cents and as you can see there's a big difference and we're going to talk about which one is better. Now obviously Crayola comes with a very reasonable price, a very cheap price and also it's very well pigmented. And um, as you can see on my paper um, that I put down swatches for both Prisma and Crayola. And as you can see, the Crayola is kind of like patchy um, and the Prisma definitely applied really smoothly. Um, and as for the blending aspect, I would say that the Prisma color obviously blended a little better and the Crayola had some trouble blending. And one of the things that I dislike about Crayola uh, and their colored pencils in general is that you can only b blend to a certain extent. So I was trying to blend this thing and um, I was trying to get the darker green to go over the lighter green a little more and it just completely covered the lighter green not bringing out the blending that I wanted it to. And um, it's not just this time but whenever you blend with Crayola's colored pencils um, after a while you just can't, it just won't make a difference, it just won't make a dent and um, you get really frustrated because you you know you can't bring that really really rich color into your drawing and it could be super important for example if you're doing realism with these Crayola colored pencils and you can't bring out a certain shade of color or, a cer uh, or you can't do, do your gradient properly then what are you gonna do? Um, I was attempting to um, do that famous chocolate dipped strawberry the other day with um, these Crayola colored pencils because I was just like I haven't used them in a while um, and why not pick it up a few liter a few uh, years later and um, it was so hard to blend and it just wouldn't apply smoothly it was honestly really patchy so you have to like you have to shade in one direction and it's not just with um, it's just not with like Crayola but it's for every single colored pencil but in Crayola with their colored pencils it's super important because um, it's just not going to blend or apply smoothly to kind of cover up those patches. Um, but about Prismacolor, um, as you guys saw, it blended really, really nicely. The two colors just mixed together perfectly and um, they apply to the paper smoothly. And um, I would say my only dislike about Prismacolors is how the pigment, when you're like applying lots of pressure, sometimes the pigment like goes flying in places. It's not that much, but I've noticed it happen. Um, and that reminds me, um, there's this thing, it's called solvent. And I'm not sure if you've heard of it before, but you can use it to blend colored pencils. And I learned this recently, I didn't know that solvent existed. And you can get it off of Amazon for five or six dollars, I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong, um, link in the description box below if you want to get it. Um, so if you're buying a 24 pack of Crayola pencils, nothing wrong with it. Obviously there's definitely a lot of cons to it. Um, but if you use the solvent, this sometimes doesn't work, but it definitely blends it out really nicely. Um, I saw this woman do it, her name, her YouTube channel name is Temi um, Dasso Art, and um, I saw her use these to color a, um, a strawberry, a chocolate dip strawberry, but what I noticed is that, um, is that uh, they wouldn't have blended nicely without the solvent. And that's the only thing I have to say about like Crayola. Without the solvent, you're not going to get that nice blend. 
But if you're doing detail work, then I think Crayola is just the great purchase for you. And that's where I think Prismacolor kind of falters. Yeah, you can sharpen it, but honestly, like I was saying, the pigment kind of goes flying everywhere. Like I was noticing when I applied some pressure, um, it just, it start, like the, it started like becoming like, so it started softening. And so if I were to be doing detailed work, I would say that it, it wouldn't be like as sharp and nice as the Crayola would have been. And so if you're doing detailed work and you're not really going to be using them on a day-to-day -day basis or for like shading, for like skin tones, for example, or maybe you're coloring a, a, a flower, um, if you're just doing detail work, then I think Crayola is great. For Prismacolors, um, I would say that they blend really, really nicely, as I was saying earlier. So if you're doing skin tones, it's great. You just have to have the right color selection. And um, you can you can also you know blend really nicely, and for it just it's just much better at all of that. And if I'm being honest, even if you buy this solvent, like I was saying, it doesn't work sometimes. And solvent works for like watercolor, acrylic, all of those kind of things, but um, sometimes it just doesn't work, and it ends up ruining your drawing furthermore. Um, so with Prismacolors, you don't have to worry about solvent, and also technically you're just spending more money on solvent um, because if you have to like keep on buying it once you run out of solvent it's like a small bottle I've seen it before it's like this small and um, once you run out you know you have to pay for that five or six dollar solvent again and eventually um, the Crayola will end up costing you more than the Prismacolors do so this is where the Prismacolors are kind of in it investment in that way um, but if you're just again if you're just gonna do detailed work that I think Crayola is great um, so when it comes to the blending part obviously I've made it clear I like Prismacolor much better um, when it comes to blending it just blends so nicely and it's kind of effortless whereas the Crayola I had to go over it a couple of times it just wasn't very pretty and the final product I mean it's not very impressive. Um, something that I did try doing to help it, um, and I I, uh, I told you guys about this tip in uh, my portraits, my portrait, uh, how to draw portrait tips, uh, tricks, techniques. Um, how like I'll like shade and I'll use my finger to like smudge it, so that way it'll like blend properly. I tried doing that with Crayola and it just smudged. I mean, it was expected. I wasn't exactly sure if it was gonna work or not, but I tried it, it didn't work. It didn't work with the Prismacolors either. So really, I would say the solvent is your only way out of being able to blend properly with Crayolas. Um, obviously, I think that the Prismacolors um, definitely should not cost that much. Um, their blending is great. I would say at most, um, I would pay something like $16 for it, um, not something like $28 for the 24 pack. And when you compare it to Crayola, it's just, you know, I, I think a lot of people would prefer Crayola just because of the price. And I totally understand that, I totally agree with it. It all depends on you. Um, and the Prismacolors, I would say also, you know, once, once you keep on sharpening it and over the years, your pencil will just become tiny and small. You have to buy them again. Um, so in that aspect, Crayola is definitely better. Um, but I would say that Prismacolor in general is really nice. And I know this isn't a big thing, but I don't know if any of you guys have experienced this. When it comes to Crayola and their boxes though, like I understand it's environmentally like friendly and everything, but their boxes get destroyed and damaged so easily that it ruins your uh, your colored pencils themselves. And it's not just with their colored pencil box, it's with their crayons and their marker box. And I just think it's inconvenient because, you know, you need a place to store your colored pencils. And, you know, um, if you go and buy a pencil box, again, here's where I'm coming with how the Crayolas, you're going to end up spending like the same amount of money that you spent on your Prismacolors. If you want to buy like a pencil box to, box to like store all of your colored pencils, then technically, you know, you're wasting your money. Um, so Prismacolors come in like this, this tray and um, 
this metal, this like this box. And um, obviously it can dent, if you drop it, it can dent. Um, but if I were to drop the Crayola box, then maybe, well obviously it wouldn't dent, but obviously this one's just more efficient and better. And it, it like the crayon, the, uh, sorry, the colored pencils uh, come in these trays. So you can take out those trays, you know, um, color coordinate everything. And it's kind of just easy to like slide one out and slide it back in. So I guess that's convenient. Um, but in general, I think that it all depends on you, it depends on what you want to draw if you use colored pencils that often. If, um, if I'm being honest, if you're somebody who loves colored pencils, then you should go with Prismacolors. It's an investment, but if you draw often and um, you want something uh, affordable and cheap, then I would buy the, uh, the Crayola. Now, um, the last thing, uh, a couple of more things, just like two or three more things. Um, and by the way, this is the Crayola and this is the Prismacolor. And as you can see, there's like a difference in the two different pigments. And something that I have to appreciate about, about Crayola is that it's not like some sort of, you know, cheap, like not very uh, efficient pigment. It actually has some really nice pigment and you can actually, you know, put a lot of pressure on this pencil and the colors will come out really vibrant and great. I would say um, these are definitely more for pop, again, coming in with the solvent. If you can do all of that, then these are great. Um, with these, I would say the tones are a little more muted, but they definitely have a great color selection. And I think the muted tones, again, depends on you, um, but it also depends on their color range. I would say that Prismacolor, honestly, in comparison, which one were you to draw the sky with? Like, I think I would rather... Um, uh, color a sky with this with this like sky blue than this blue just because this blue I feel like I would use more for like a lake or maybe like a flower um, But this is definitely sky blue, you know a bright sunny day whereas this is a little more muted um, and Now I made a drawing and um, I used my um, my Prisma colors in it and I just used uh, two shades, that's red and green. And no, there's no Crayola in this. And as you can see, it blended pretty nicely. I mean, I went pretty hard on the pencil. I didn't really like do any of that gradient stuff. And it, it came out pretty nice. I really like it. Um, something that I do have to complain about though is Prismacolor selection of greens. They have a dark green, they have a light green, but their light green is more like a green that nobody wants to use. It's just, it's it's not, it's not, uh, you know? And um, as you can see, I actually used it in this drawing, and it's just such a pop green that I just, it's not likable. And um, this is where I like the Crayola much better. Like, they have that dark green and they have the light green. Um, so, you know, that I guess it all depends on what you're drawing again. Um, and I think it all just comes down to that. Um, and also one thing, one more thing I have to mention, Crayola does have a skin tone set. So Crayola obviously has this one colored pencil. It's even in crayons, you know, whatsoever. We all know about it. It's called Peach and it's kind of that one skin tone. It, it's not very like inclusive to all cultures. Um, so they came out with their set, um, the world set and they have a great selection of um, skin tones there and honestly I, I gotta give it to um, Crayola they're even selling it for a really reasonable price so if you know what you're doing then get the Crayolas um, but in the long time in the long run Prismacolors are really just an investment um, that's what I have to say about it. Um, obviously, I lean a little more towards Prismacolor just because it saves me from a little more hassle, but it depends on you and um, the type of art you're making, uh, how much money you want to spend, all of that kind of stuff. And I hope you guys learned something from this video and I hope it was helpful to you and hopefully now you know if you want to get Crayolas or Prismacolors. Um, I love you guys so much. Uh, let me know if you guys, uh, what types of videos you guys want to see from me in the comments down below. And if you guys want to see more videos like this from me as well. I love you guys so much and I will see you guys next Sunday in a new video. Bye guys!